Hi everybody, and welcome to episode 106 of the TV Knitting Podcast. Hi, my name is Sharon, also known as Stitch Mistress, and I'm recording a little bit late this week. It is Wednesday, March 23rd, 2016, and I have a week off for spring break, so... Like I said, I'm recording just a little bit late this week because, um, yeah, I was busy. So I will tell you that, I will tell you more about why I'm recording late in a little while, in a few minutes. So, yeah, I've really been enjoying my break. I have lots of things to show you. And before I start, a little bit of housekeeping. I started uploading the audio to iTunes, uh, audio only, and some people are fine with it. I've had some comments in the group uh, from people who miss it on iTunes, and I completely understand. So what I did was I put up a survey in my group, and you can vote whether you want to keep it in iTunes or just have the audio in iTunes. So, vote! And I'm leaning toward putting the video back on iTunes. So, yeah, I, you know, I can see the downloads I'm getting on iTunes and I'm getting less downloads per show audio and that's fine. You know, most people are watching me on YouTube these days and that's great. So, I'm still weighing over all that, and I'll let you know how it goes. But vote in the group, on the TV Knitting Podcast group on Ravelry. All right, so let's get started. And before I start, I just wanted to talk a little bit about a fabulous time that I had on Saturday, this past Saturday. It was March 19th. And I went with a friend down to the Volan Vine Yarns trunk show in New Jersey at Do You Knit? And I had just the best day. So I'll talk a little bit more about that in my stash segment. All right, so let's get started with what I'm working on. And... I also want to talk a, a little bit about pretty much everything I'm working on has issues. Maybe I'll call, maybe I'll have a segment, Knitting Issues, because I have some knitting issues, people. And it's mostly due to not the knitting, not, not the pattern, but my issues. For sure. So here is the first one I want to talk about. And this is my Hu Hui shawl by Hohi Locatelli. And as you can see, I have started the blue section. And that is completely gorgeous, and I totally love it to pieces. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm really, really happy with it. So right now, I am on the eyelet row. Actually, I finished the eyelet row. There's an eyelet row right in the middle of this blue section, so you do 10 rows of the blue, and then you do an eyelet row here. So I was knitting, last night I was knitting back onto the eyelet row, for row one of the garter stitch section after the eyelet row. And I'm knitting along and I'm coming to all these stitches that don't have eyelets. And I, I'm thinking, what's going on? And I, I was knitting in the car, it was a little dark. I knit right in this section right here between my two fingers right here. I knit about 30 stitches, maybe more, maybe 50 stitches, without eyelets. Who does that? 
there are fifty there are almost five hundred stitches on on these rows right now. And I must have picked it up and just started knitting blindly and then put it down and didn't think about it and then said, Oh, I'm on an eyelet row. So annoyed. So annoyed people. I have I am just very annoyed. So Luckily, it was toward the end of the 500 stitches, so I'm only going to have to, I'm, I'm going to have to rip back. I'll show you. I have to rip back pretty much in between my hands there in the front, right in, between, right in this front part where the needles are. I have to rip all that back. It's probably about 180 stitches, maybe. Now, I am extremely comfortable with ripping. I'm extremely comfortable with getting my stitches back on the needles. It's not a problem. It's just a pain. <laughs> it's a big pain. So, yeah. I am a little bit annoyed by this, but it is what it is, and there's nothing I can do right now about it. I have to, I have to fix it. So, it's going fairly quickly. I mean, the rows take me at least a half an hour per row, so I want to say I have another five hours of knitting. And then it has a Pico bind off with 500 stitches. It won't be done by the next time I record. Unless I skip recording this weekend and go to the following week. We'll see. So that's issue number one. Issue number two is just equally as frustrating. These are my beautiful Valentine's Day socks that I bought from Mustache Yarns in an update just before Valentine's Day. And I love them. They do not match. They're not matchy-matchy. And there's also another issue with these. This sock foot And this sock is finished except for the, the heel. Okay, this sock foot is about five stitches shorter than this sock foot. Four or five. I have to really sit down and, in the light of day, count it up. So, this is a major issue. Well, it might be. I don't know. I mean, well, we'll see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out this waist yarn and put this short one on a needle and try it on. And then I'll probably do the same with this one. I think this one's going to be the better foot, the longer foot. I have really big feet. So We'll just see. We'll just have to see which one fits me better. Maybe I won't notice a difference. Wishful thinking. And if I need to add to this, I have some options. I mean, obviously I could rip the whole thing back and then just add five stitches, put in more waste yarn, and be done with it. But that's, look at all that knitting. That's a lot of knitting to rip out. My other option is to Kitchener take this off, take these stitches off waist yarn, Kitchener them together here where I have the waist yarn, then go up five st stitches and cut in the heel. That's probably what I'll do if that's the case. It's not really a big deal, but it's just more work, obviously. 
And I've cut in heels before. It's not a big deal. I just prefer the waist yarn because I just think it's less fiddly. But if I have to, I will, I will do it that way. I will take out these. I will just kitchener this together. And what are you going to do? It's not a big deal. It's just a little more ends to weave in and whatnot. Then I'll have to make the top of this a little longer. So I'll probably just add to the ribbing rather than rip out all that ribbing. And that'll be it. And then I'll put in the heel. I'll just see which, which foot fits me better. And I'll let you know <laughs> next week. Again, I need some time, some good lighting to fix these. I don't know what happened to these. I'm really not sure why this all happened. I mean, I, I thought I measured it correctly, but obviously I did not. So we shall see. So the only thing that's actually going pretty well is my sweater that I'm knitting. Again, from the Authentic Collection by Hohi Locatelli. And this is the big old coat. And this is going really well so far. The only thing is it's kind of in a standstill now because I have to put stitches on waist yarn and pick up stitches and again, I need good lighting. <laughs> so I have all this stuff I need to do to this knitting. And I've just been doing other things this week, being home. Just organizing the house and, and all those other fu cooking, fun things you need to do. So here's how this sweater works. This is the back. It's got a gorgeous stitch pattern, and I'm completely in love with it. And then this is the collar part right here, and then this is the front, the right front. So that's kind of how it goes. So now I have to just pick up and do this left front, and then I'll be able to join in the round. And move on. Okay, so that's basically what I'm working on. I have no finished objects this week, but that's that's fine, no problem. Now on to stash stories or stash acquisition. So let me talk to you a bit about my trip down to Do You Knit? My friend and I left around 9.30 from her house, and it was about an hour and a half drive, so not bad at all. And we arrived at about 11 o'clock, and the store had opened at 10. And parking wasn't great. I mean, we had to park kind of behind on another street and walk over. It wasn't, it wasn't a big deal. And I forgot my glasses in the car, which really annoyed me. So I had my sunglasses, so I kept taking my sunglasses off, and that annoyed me. But anyway, so so we walk in, and we walk in, and <sighs> there's so many people. I did not expect to see so many people. And the first person I saw was Jenny from Tiny Paper Fo Foxes, and we had never met before, and it was so awesome to see her. Gave her a big hug, and Devin was there, shook his hand, and we chatted. And the, But the first thing Jenny said to me was, you're too late, they're sold out. She's sold out. And I was like, that's amazing, that's awesome. I mean, I honestly didn't go there to buy yarn. I mean, if there was yarn there, yeah. But I really went to see people. So I wanted to see Kristen. I wanted to, I knew Jenny was going to be there. I wanted to meet Jenny. I was hoping I'd meet other people. So, so that was cool. I was fine with that. So I just couldn't believe the response. It's so awesome. Congratulations, Kristen. It was amazing. And there were so many people, it was hard for me to shop. Because when there's all 
those people around, it's kind of hard. But she, the store owner had a wall of hedgehog fibers, which I'd never even seen before in person. I'd heard about it, didn't know what, that, what it was all about. And I kind of glanced at it, and I, nothing really popped out at me. And I was milling around, talking to people. And then on the table where Kristen's samples still were was a skein of yarn. And I looked at it, and, and I, it wasn't anybody's. Nobody was around claiming it. So I grabbed it. And I will show it to you now. It is Hedgehog Fibers. And I was kind of hesitant whether to buy it or not, because it's a single. And... I'm not a big fan of singles. I'm kind of over that knitting single thing, although I do have some single hand spun that I that I have to knit. But I could not resist this color. So this is Hedgehog Fibers Skinny Singles, and the colorway is pistachio, and it is completely amazing. I am so in love with the skein. Look at these colors. This is me. These beautiful pinks and just muted and yellows. And it's got some black speckles and brown. I just fell in love with this. So, yeah, so I purchased that from, from Do You Knit. This is not something I purchased from, from Kristen. This was, this was at the shop. So, it's just beautiful. I love it to pieces. So that was that purchase. And then, you know, you wander around the store. And, again, it's hard for me to see things when there's all those people there. But I came across these. This isn't yarn. These are Knitter's Pride Knit Blockers. And they are just small wood pieces with pins coming out of them. Here's a picture of it right here. And you use it to block your work. So I'd heard Jenny from Tiny Paper Foxes talking about these. And I actually asked her what she thought. And she goes, I'll buy them. They're great. So knit blockers. Which is super cool. So then later on I saw some that there were mini skeins about the store. And I didn't really see any that I loved, and then my friend spotted a, a jar full of them. And she said, oh, you were looking for mini skeins, what about these? And I found these two mini skeins. They're 13 grams each, so they will go in my mitered square blanket. And, yeah, I... They're not big enough to put in my um, barn raising square blanket. And honestly, I don't know what they are. <laughs> I apologize. If anybody knows who was at the trunk show, what these little mini skeins are, put a comment in the YouTube comment section because I have no idea what they are. But they're beautiful and they are my colors. I'm just really into these spring candy colors right now. And... So, yeah. So then I sat down and I started hanging out with some really awesome people at this event. So I sat down and I started hanging out with some people, some new people that I just met. And I met the gals from Legacy Knits. And they are Sue and Chelsea, and it was so much fun hanging out with them. I had a great conversation, 
with Sue about podcasts and whatnot. And hi, gals. It's, it's, it was great meeting you. And also, they had a friend there that came with them, Allie, and it was great hanging out with her, too. So it was really nice, just, you know, easy going, chatting about knitting and, and Kristen's yarns, and it, it was just such a nice, nice time, you know, after I had made some purchases. So then Kristen came over and sat with us, and we got a chance to catch up. And I was talking about how I was the one colorway that I wanted to order, because she said she, I could order from her. The one colorway I wanted to get was succulents. So Kristen said, I just happen to have two skeins of it in my car. And, I, and she said, they're available. I said, bring them, bring them in. <laughs> so even though she was sold out, I was able to snag this gorgeous skein of succulents. And it's just beautiful. Just different shades of greens. And I love this minty green color. It's gorgeous. So, yeah, it was it was lots of fun. So I was really glad that I was able to to get this. And I have another skein and then a skein that my friend also ordered coming in the mail. So I will show you those when they get here. So then we were, again, we were just chatting and we were talking about all sorts of things wooly. And the subject of spindle, spinning came up and spindling in particular. So I just whipped out my Turkish spindle that I had brought with me. Oh, that's what it was. We were talking about Turkish spin spindles and different makers and whatnot. And Kristen had said she wanted to get a Jenkins, so I happened to have my Jenkins with me, so I whipped it out. And I was showing Kristen. So, of course, the gals sitting there were like, okay, spin, spin, spin. <laughs> so they're egging me on to spin. So I said, fine. So I stood up and gave a little quick demo because some people had never seen spinning on a Turkish spindle before. So I started spinning and people whipped out their phones and recorded it and it was on Instagram and I think that recording was the most hits I've ever had on Instagram. It was really cool. So then we're, we're chatting and I was talking about how I, I taught the spindle class at Rhinebeck and how someday when I retire I'd like to join the the circuit, you know, to teach knitting, you know, travel around the country and teach knitting. So they misheard me, and Allie misheard me, and she said, you're going to join the circus? <laughs> and so it was this big joke about how I was going to join the circus and do my spindle act, and it was very, very cute. So we had, we had a really great time. So, like, later on, we were Instagramming and hashtagging joining the circus, and why not? I'm going to join the circus and teach knitting <laughs> and spinning. <laughs> so, yeah, so that, that was really great. So, a little bit after that, I wandered around the store a little bit more and didn't buy anything else much. I think I got a little, another little something. I hope it's in here. Oh, it's not. I hope I didn't lose it. Oh, no, it is. I got these tiny little stitch markers, these little progress keepers. They're kind of in pastel colors. I have no idea if you can see that. I apologize if you can't. But they're basically like the wire project keepers, but they're in pretty pastel colors. You can use them to mark your progress on sweaters and mark your decreases and increases and, and everything. And and they're really pretty, and I'll probably lose all of them, like I do with all of my other progress keepers. <laughs> Except for the fancy ones. Those I tend to hold on to. These little wire ones. But they're cute. So that was it. That was all that I purchased that day. We left around 1.30 or so. Got back to New York, and it was awesome. It was a great, great time. So, 
that was why I didn't record on Saturday as I was I was at do unit. Oh, and then my friend later on after that we got together and her husband was cooking lamb stew. So my husband and I went over to their house and we had a nice dinner and it was just a fabulous day. So, yeah, I've been slowly indoctrinating indoctrinating my friend into the knitting world. She doesn't even know what a podcast is. I have to send her some links. <laughs> so, so yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. It's so nice to have a friend to go to events with. It's it's really nice and she's she's really becoming a very good knitter. I kind of taught her when she had hip surgery a few years ago and she's taken off with it. So it's really fun. All right. So that's it for that. And kind of jumping around a little bit today, but I know some of you will ask, and I meant to talk about this in the beginning of the show, but I wanted to show you what I'm wearing. This is a shawl that I knit five years ago. It is called Aeolian. I'm sure you've heard of it. It is a pattern that went viral on Ravelry. Lots of people knit it. It has 2,000 tiny, tiny little beads in it. it. Took me a few months to knit it. It is lace with beading and it actually has a little hole in it. It needs to be repaired. But it's huge and I have to really wrap it when I knit it, when I wear it. But I thought it might be fun to show you. I got the yarn at Rhinebeck in, oh gosh, probably 20, 2010, so six years ago. And it's a lace weight, and I'm trying to think of the dyer. Can't think of the dyer, sorry. But it's, the pattern is Aeolian. And it's these beautiful rust colors, and it's just a gorgeous shawl. And I don't wear it enough. Which is sad. But, oh well. Probably because it's so big, but I do, I, have, I should really start wearing it because it's, it's really lovely. I think maybe I haven't worn it because it's got the hole. Which I'm not sure how that hole got there. It's not too bad. I just have to kind of fix it. It's so busy you can't even notice. It's got a lot of holes anyway because it's lace. Alright, so the only other thing I wanted to talk to you about is I also made some other purchases at my local yarn shop. I work part-time at the local yarn shop in my town because I teach there on Monday nights and I basically can get yarn for free while I work for it. <laughs> I get a discount and then whatever I, you know, whatever hours I work pays for the yarn. So I got this beautiful, beautiful skein of Fino by Manos del Uruguay. I love this. Again, it's this, I'm really in love with these pale pastels lately. And the colorway is Rosewater. So it's just beautiful. And I was looking up patterns, and there's a pattern called the Lace Eater that I would like to knit out of this. But it, I, I'm going to need two skeins. So next time I teach at the yarn shop, I am going to have to look for another skein of this that matches closely 
because there were some that were much darker pink and I didn't care for these. I liked this light peachy one. And then I got a skein of Malabrigo Rios in the Piedras colorway. And this is to make another set of boot toppers for me. As I showed you last week, I just really love the, the gray boot toppers that I made. So I wanted to make a pair with brown tones. And I chose this color. And you really, when you buy Rios, you have to really look through all the skeins because they all kind of look, they all are different. I mean, I saw colorways that were totally different names but looked alike. I mean, you have to really watch with Rios. And if you're going to make a project with more than one, you know, try and really match the skeins as you, best as you can because they're all different. But... I love this one. This one has a lot of different colors. It's fall type of colors in it. So hopefully over the summer I will cast this on and have it ready for next fall's boot season. So that brings us to the end of my show. Not much else going on this week. So I will sit down the rest of the week and try and figure out all of my knitting issues <laughs> and this weekend when I record hopefully some of them will be resolved so stay tuned you will see that very very soon so I hope you guys have a wonderful spring Easter season if you celebrate and cheers mm -hmm.